All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Thought Currents We need to be careful of what we think and talk, because thought runs in currents as real as those of air and water. Of what we think and talk we attract to us like a current of thought. This acts on mind or body for good or ill. If thought was visible to the physical eye, we should see its currents flowing to and from people. We should see that persons similar in temperament, character, and motive are in the same literal current of thought. We should see that a person in a despondent and angry mood was in the same current with others despondent or angry, and that each one in such mood serves as an additional battery or generator of such thought and is strengthening that particular current. We should see that these forces working in similar manner and connecting the hopeful, courageous and cheerful with all others hopeful, courageous and cheerful. When you are in low spirits or blue, you have acting on you the thought current coming from all others in low spirits. You are in oneness with the despondent order of thought. The mind is then sick. It can be cured, but a permanent cure cannot always come immediately when one has long been in the habit of opening the mind to this current of thought. In attracting to us the current of any kind of evil, we become for a time one with evil. In the thought current of supreme power for good, we may become more and more as one with that power, or in biblical phrase, one with God. That is the desirable thought current for us to attract. If a group of people talk of any form of disease or suffering, of deathbed scenes and dying agonies, if they cultivate this morbid taste for the unhealthy and ghastly, and it forms their staple topics of conversation, they bring in themselves a light current of thought, full of images of sickness, suffering, and things revolting to a healthy mind. This current will act on them and eventually bring them disease and suffering in some form. If we are talking much of sick people, or are much among them and thinking of them, be our motive what it may, we shall draw on ourselves a current of sickly thought, and its ill results will in time materialize itself in our bodies. We have far more to do to save ourselves than is now realized. When men talk business together, they attract a business current of idea and suggestion. The better they agree, the more of this thought current do they attract, and the more do they receive of idea and suggestion for improving and extending their business. In this way does the conference or discussion among the leading members of the company or corporation create the force that carries their business ahead. Travel in first class style put up at first-class hotels, and dress in apparel as costly as your purse can buy, without running into the extreme of floppishness. In these things you find aids to place you in a current of relative power and success. If your purse does not now warrant such expenditure, or you think it does not, you can commence so living in mind. This will make you take the first steps in this direction. Successful people in the domain of finance unconsciously live up to this law. Desire for show influences some to this course. But there is another force and factor which so impels them. That is a wisdom of which their material minds are scarcely conscious. It is the wisdom of the spirit telling them to get in the thought current of the successful and by such current be born to success. It is not a rounded out success, but good as far as it goes. If our minds are, from what is falsely called economy, ever set on the cheap, cheap lodgings, cheap food, and cheap fares, we get in the thought current of the cheap, the slavish, and the fearful. Our views of life and our plans will be influenced and warped by it. It paralyzes that courage and enterprise implied in the old adage, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Absorbed in this current and having it ever acting on you, it is felt immediately when you come into the presence of the successful and causes them to avoid you. They feel in you the absence of that element which brings them their relative success. 
It acts as a barrier, preventing the flow to you of their sympathy. Sympathy is a most important factor in business. Despite opposition and competition, a certain thought current of sympathy binds the most successful together. The mania for cheapness lies in the thought current of fear and failure. The thought current of fear and failure and the thought current of dash, courage and success will not mingle nor bring together the individuals who are in these respective streams of thought. They antagonize and between the two classes of mind is built a barrier more impenetrable than walls of stone. Live all together in any one idea, any one reform, and you will get into the thought current of all other minds who are carrying that idea to extremes. There is no reform but what can be pushed too far. The harm of such extreme falls on the person who so pushes it. It warps mind, judgment, and reason all on one side. It makes fanatics, bigots, cranks, and lunatics whether the idea involves an art or study, a science, a reform, or a movement. It connects the extremists of all people in such order and current of mind, no matter what their specialties may be. Such people often end in becoming furious haters of all who differ with them, and in so hating, expend their force in tearing themselves to pieces. The safe side lies in calling daily for the thought current of wisdom from the infinite mind. When that wisdom is more invoked, our reforms and organizations for the good of the whole will not run into internal wrangles almost as soon as they organize. As now conducted, the thought current of hatred of and antagonism to the oppressor and monopolist is admitted at their birth. This very force breeds quarrels and dissensions among the members. It is force used to tear down instead of build up. It is like taking the fire used to generate steam in the boilers and scattering it throughout the building. When people come together and in any way talk out their ill will toward others, they are drawing to themselves with tenfold power an injurious thought current. Because the more minds united on any purpose, the more power do they attract to affect that purpose. The thought current so attracted by those chronic complainers, grumblers, and scandal mongers will injure their bodies. Because whatever thought is most held in the mind is most materialized in the body. If we are always thinking and talking of other people's imperfections, we are drawing to us ever of that thought current and thereby incorporating into ourselves those very imperfections. We have said in previous books that talk creates force and that the more who talk in sympathy, the greater is the volume and power of the thought current generated and attracted for good or ill. A group of gossips who can never put their heads together without raking over the faults of the absent are unconsciously working a law with terrible results to themselves. There is an exhilaration and scandal and the raking over of our friends or neighbors or enemies faults is almost equal to that produced by champagne. But in the end we pay dearly for these pleasures. If but two people were to meet at regular intervals and talk of health, strength and vigor of body and mind, at the same time opening their minds to receive of the supreme the best idea as to ways and means for securing these blessings, they would attract to them a thought current of such idea. If these two people, or more, kept up these conversations on these subjects at a regular time and place, and found pleasure in such communings, and they found they were not forced or stilted, if they could carry them on without controversy and enter into them without preconceived idea and not allow any shade of tattle or tale-bearing or censure of others to drift into their talk, they would be astonished at the year's end at the beneficial results to mind and body. Because in so doing and coming together with a silent demand of the Supreme to get the best idea, they would attract to them a current of life-giving force. Let two or so commence, rather than more, for every two persons in the proper agreement and accord to bring the desired results are not easy to find. 
The desire for such meetings must be spontaneous, and any other motive will bar out the highest thought current for good. The old-fashioned revival meeting or camp meeting, through the combined action and desire of a number of minds, brought a thought current, causing for the time the ecstasy, fervor, and enthusiasm which characterized those gatherings of the North American Indian who worked himself into the frenzy of his war dance by a similar law. He brought to him by force of united desire a thought element and current which stimulated and even intoxicated him. His sole desire was to bring on him this mental intoxication. The more minds so working in the same vein, the quicker came the desired result. The real orator in his effort draws to him a current of thought which is sent again from him to his audience thrills them. So does the inspired actor or actress. They bring a higher and more powerful element of thought to themselves first, and this flowing through them acts on the audience afterwards. If you dwell a great deal on your own faults, you will by the same laws attract more and more of their thought current, and so increase those faults. It is enough that you recognize in yourself those faults. Don't be always saying to yourself, I am weak or cowardly or ill-tempered or imprudent. Draw to yourself rather the thought current of strength, courage, even temper, prudence, and all other good qualities. Keep the image of these qualities in mind, and you will make them a part of yourself. You have sometimes been beset, absorbed, and even annoyed for days in the thought of the suit of clothes you wanted to buy, the cut, color, and fashion of a dress, the selection of a bonnet or cravat, until you were nothing in thought but clothes, bonnet, dress, hat, or some other detail of life. You may not have been able to make up your mind what you should buy, and then have possibly been tossed about mentally on the billows of indecision for days. You have then got into the thought current of thousands of other minds continually in this mood of thought. The surest way for a young woman to become ugly is to be discontented, peevish, cross, complaining, and envious of others. Because in these states of mind, she is drawing to her the invisible substance of thought which acts on and injures her body. It ruins the complexion, makes lines and creases in the face, sharpens the nose, and transforms the face of youth into that of the shrew in a very quick time. I'm not moralizing here or saying, you ought not to do thus and so. It is simply cause and result. Put your face on the fire, and it is scarred and disfigured because of an element acting on it. Put your mind in the fire of ill will, envy, or jealousy, and it is also scarred, seamed, and disfigured because of an element as real as fire, though invisible, acting on it. All things that are evil and imperfect, such as disagreeable traits of character and others, things unpleasant to hear or look upon, should be gotten out of our minds as quickly as possible. Otherwise, if dwelt upon, they attract of their thought current. They will then become permanent spiritual fixtures, and these will in time materialize themselves into corresponding physical fixtures. If we are always keeping in mind the person doing some wrong thing, we are the more apt to do that very thing ourselves. Let us endeavor then with the help of the supreme power, to get into the thought current of things that are healthy, natural, strong, and beautiful. Let us try to avoid thoughts of disease, of suffering, of deformity, of faultiness. A field of waving grain or the rolling surf is better to contemplate than to pour over the horrors of a railway accident. We do not realize how much we are depressed physically and mentally by the incessant feast of horrors prepared for us by the daily press. We invoke in their perusal a thought current filled with things and images of horror and suffering. We bring ourselves in this way in connection and oneness with all other morbid and diseased mind which lives and revels in this current. It leads not to life but to disease and death. Neither others nor yourself 
are one particle aided by your knowing of every fire, explosion, murder, theft, or crime which the newspapers chronicle every 24 hours. If we read books written by cynical, sarcastic minds, who are so warped as to be able to see only the faults of others, and at last unable to see good anywhere, we bring on ourselves their unhealthy thought current, and are one with it. The arrow always tipped with ill nature and sarcasm is deadliest to him who sends it. In other words, the man who is ever inviting and cultivating this thought current is inviting the unrest, disease, and misfortune it will assuredly bring to him, and when we get too much into this mind, we invite similar results. You may be neat, careful, and methodical in your habits, exact and elaborate in your work, yet if you associate closely with those who are careless and slovenly, you may find yourself a tendency to be also careless and slovenly, and a difficulty in resuming and carrying out your former neat, methodical, and orderly methods. Because you have not only absorbed of the careless mind, or the mind lacking patience to do anything reposefully, but the fragment of such mind, so absorbed, is acting as a magnet in attracting to you its like thought current. When an evil is known, it is half cured. Bear in mind, when you are in any unpleasant frame of mind, that a thought current of such disagreeable mood is acting on you. Bear in mind that you are then one in a sort of electrical connection with many other sickly and morbid minds all generating and sending unpleasant thought to each other. The next thing to be done is to pray or demand to get out of this current of evil thought. You cannot do this wholly of your own individual effort. You must demand of the supreme power to divert it from you. We can more and more invite the thought current of things that are lively, sprightly, and amusing. Life should be full of playfulness. Continued seriousness is but a few degrees removed from gloom and melancholy. Thousands live too much in the thought current of seriousness. Faces which wear a smiling expression are scarce. Some never smile at all. Some have forgotten how to smile, and it actually hurts them to smile, or to see others do so. Sickness and disease are nursed into fresher and fresher activity by the serious mood of mind. Habit continually strengthens the sad capacity of dwelling on the malady, which may be the merest trifle at first. People get so much into this current that woeful diseases are manufactured out of some trifling irritation in some part of the body. Many material things are helps to divert a thought current acting disagreeably on you. You may have a daily set of disagreeable symptoms they may seem to come as adjuncts to the daily routine of life. The breakfast table, the furniture, the conversation, and even the persons immediately about you seem to recall them. Travel sometimes banishes them entirely. The sight of different surroundings diverts that particular thought current. Material remedies may temporarily affect the same result. So may any sudden change of life or occupation. But all of these are secondary aids to the supreme power. The thought current of fear is everywhere. All humanity fears something. Disease, death, loss of fortune, loss of friends, loss of something. Everyone has his or her pet fear. It extends to the most trivial details of life. The streets are full of people who, if fearing nothing else, fear they won't catch a train or the next streetcar. The more sensitive you are to the impress of thought, the more liable are you to be affected by this thought current of fear until your spirit, by constant demand of the supreme power, builds up for itself an armor of thought positive to this current, and one which will deny its access. You can commence this building in saying, whenever you are affected in any way above mentioned or in any disagreeable fashion, I refuse to accept this thought and the mental condition it has brought on me which affects my body. You commence then to turn aside the current thought of evil. Everyone has some pet fear, some disease they may have never had, 
but always dreading something they are in special fear of losing. Some trifle, even but a word or sentence uttered by another, brings this pet fear to mind. Instantly, through long habit, the mind reverts to this fear. Instantly it opens to it, and the whole thought, volume and current, rushes to and acts on them. It acts and vibrates on that particular chord of your nature, which for years has sounded your pet weakness. Then in some way the body is affected disagreeably. There are myriads of different symptoms. The body may become weak and tremulous. There may be loss of appetite, tremulousness, a dry tongue, a bad taste in the mouth, weakness in the joints, drowsiness, difficulty of concentrating the mind on your business, and many other disagreeable sensations. Such symptoms are often classed as malaria. In a sense, the name is a correct one. Only in very many of these cases, it is a bad atmosphere or current of thought, which is acting on our minds instead of the fancied bad material atmosphere. Unquestionably, an atmosphere full of vegetable or animal decomposition will affect many people. But some live for years in the midst of stagnant pools and swamps who have never had malaria. Others far removed from such locations on high and dry ground do have it. They have taken on a thought current of fear. Place yourself in a house where there has recently been panic or scare. Though you may know nothing of it, you are well and strong the day before. You arise in the morning, and soon this whole train of disagreeable sensation affects upon you, because the house or place is saturated with the thought current of fear. Put a fear on city, town, or country of some deadly epidemic or some great calamity, and hundreds of the more sensitive, who may have no fear of that epidemic or calamity, are still affected by it disagreeably. The thought current affects in them in their particular weak spot. A fanatic predicts some great catastrophe. The sensational newspapers take up the topic, ventilate it, affect to ridicule, but still write about it. This sets more minds to thinking and more people to talking. The more talk, the more injurious force is generated. As a result, thousands of people are affected by it unpleasantly, some in one way, some in another, because the whole force of that volume of fear is let loose upon them. Some are killed outright. Entirely unaware of the cause, they open their minds more and more to it, dwell on it in secret, put out no resisting thought until at last the spirit, unable longer to carry such a load, snaps the link which connects it with the body. The more impressionable you are to thought about you, the more you are liable to be thus affected. But you can train your mind to shut out this thought. You can gradually train it to bar tightly this door to weakness and to keep open only the one to strength. You can do this by cultivating the mood of drawing to yourself and keeping in the mood and current of thought coming of God or the supreme power for good. Impressionability, or capacity to receive thought, is source either of strength or weakness. Fine-grained, sensitive, highly developed minds today often carry the weakest bodies, because through ignorance they are always inviting some of these currents of evil without any knowledge of their existence or the means of throwing them off. They are ignorantly either courting or exposing themselves to such current. Improper individual association is one chief source of such exposure. The finer feminine organization is more sensitive to every shade and ray of thought about it, good or bad. Men absorbed in their business generate, for a time, a certain positiveness which throws off the fear current. But this positiveness cannot always last. Women from this cause often suffer a thousandfold more in the privacy of their homes than men are aware of. The average man defines it as woman's way and wonders why she is so full of nervousness, vapors, notions, and ill health. As you place your reliance on the infinite mind to bring you out of all these agencies for ill, 
the mind in some way will bring many material aids to help you out. That mind will suggest medicines and foods and surroundings and changes not only to help you temporarily but permanently so that when you are cured you are cured for all time. A cheerful, buoyant, hopeful mind and no mind is cheerful, hopeful and buoyant without being nearer the infinite than one that is depressed, sour and gloomy. Be that mind of your doctor or your friend will help you to get out of the injurious thought current. Regard such mind as a help from the infinite, but don't put your whole trust in that individual. Put the trust in the supreme power which has sent to you the individual as a temporary aid or crutch until your spiritual limbs are strong enough to bear you. The more you get into the thought current coming from the infinite mind, making yourself more and more a part of that mind, exactly as you may become a part of any vein of low, morbid, unhealthy mind in opening yourself to that current, the quicker you are freshened and renewed physically and mentally. You become continually a newer being. Changes for the better come quicker and quicker. Your power increases to bring results. You lose gradually all fear as it is proven more and more to you that when you are in the thought current of infinite good, there is nothing to fear. You realize more and more clearly that there is a great power and force which cares for you. You are wonderstruck at the fact that when your mind is set in the right direction, all material things come to you with very little physical or external effort. You wonder then at man's toiling and striving fagging himself out literally to death, when from such excess of effort he actually drives from him the rounded out good of health, happiness, and material prosperity all combined. You will see in this demand for the highest good that you are growing to power greater than you ever dreamed of. It will dawn on you that real life destined for the awakened few now and the many in the future is a dazzling dream, a permanent realization that is happiness to exist, a serenity and contentment without abatement, a transition from pleasure to pleasure and from the great to the greater pleasure. You find as you get more and more into the current of the infinite mind that exhausting toil is not required of you but that when you commit yourself in trust to this current and let it bear you where it will, all things needful will come to you. When you are getting into the right thought current, when you are getting into the right thought current, you may for a time experience more of uneasiness, physical and mental than ever. This is because the new element acting on you makes you more sensitive to the presence of evil. The new is driving the old out. The new thought current searches and detects every little error in your mind before unnoticed and repels it. This causes a struggle and mind and body are for a time unpleasantly affected by it. It is like a house, a cleaning, a process usually involving a good deal of dust and disturbance. The new spirit you call to you is cleaning your spiritual house. There is no limit to the power of the thought current you can attract to you, nor limit to the things that can be done through the individual by it. In the future, some people will draw so much of the higher quality of thought to them that by it they will accomplish what some would call miracles. In this capacity of the human mind for drawing a thought current, ever increasing in fineness of quality and power, lies the secret of what has been called magic.